monster, 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 Hey Creepers, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe down below. As you know, in the Creepy Files, we love all things creepy, and it's that time of year. So for the next 50 days, we're going to be doing 50 Days of Halloween. Around this time, we would also love to throw in a few subscriber stories here and there, so don't forget to send them in. Anyways, let's creep on into this video. The first state we're going to discuss is Delaware. The first story from Delaware is the Addy C. Bethany. The Addy Sea is a bed and breakfast with a sea view that is said to be one of the most haunted places in Delaware. The house was built in 1902 and was named after John M. Addy. Over the years, it has changed hands several times. At least three of the 13 rooms are said to be haunted. The first room being the haunted bathroom. The copper tub is said to violently shake on occasion. Room number six is said to be haunted as well. People report hearing an organ being played, but there is no organ in the room. Room number 11 is said to be haunted by the ghost of Paul Delaney, a man who once worked at the Addy Sea. But this is the only, only the beginning of the paranormal activity. There are reports of a ghost who runs through the hallways in the evening. At certain times, the air is filled with the scent of perfume and mysterious music floats through the building. There are also reports of footsteps on the roof in the dead of night, which some believe is Kurt Addy who fell to his death from the roof. Number two is Fort Delaware. Peace Patch Island has been owned by the military since the 1810s. The French built the fort to protect Delaware from the Confederates and other enemies. The dungeons of the fort are said to be the most active spot paranormal wise. Prisoners would have been kept in the dungeon without beds or water. They slept on the floor with the vermin. So death and disease were common. Many people have reported shadow figures and full body apparitions in the dungeon. Other reports are of hearing voices echoing through the dark halls of the fort. There have also been sounds of chains rattling reported. The, third, the second story of Delaware is Old Maggie's Bridge. The ghost story of Old Maggie's Bridge may be more, than, more of an urban legend than a ghost story, but it's so believed locals will warn you of the bridge. The bridge is located on Route 78 in Seaford and is allegedly the site of a fatal accident in which a pregnant woman named Maggie had lost her life. The story says if you stand on the bridge at night and shout, Maggie, I have your baby, that you'll hear the sound of a sobbing Maggie scrambling in the bushes looking for her child. The third story comes from Bellevue Hall. This property sits in Bellevue State Park. The second and third floors are closed to the public, but the staff say that these are the most active ghost spots. The spirits are said to mess around with electricity, move chairs around, and be heard in the form of screams and laughter. The fourth story comes from Cape Hen Henlopen State Park. It is said that there is a phantom soldier still on duty behind Tower 12. Those who get too close to his post have heard growling or were yelled at by a disembodied voice. The face of the soldier has manifested itself in photographs and videos recorded in the area on several occasions. The next state we're going to discuss is Florida. The first story from Florida is Ashley's Restaurant. A lot of strange things have been reported at Ashley's Restaurant in Rockledge, Florida. People report seeing objects flying around, feeling hands push them, and seeing the apparition of a young woman in the ladies' room. 
investigators found one true story to back up the report. When Ashley's opened originally in 1933, it was called Jack's Tavern. And a 19-year-old woman named Ethel Allen either worked at the tavern or frequented there. In 1934, she was a victim of a murder and her burned and mutilated body was found in the Indian River. Her murderer was never found and it's believed Ethel is likely the ghost that haunts the restaurant. Story number two is that of Bellamy Bridge. This is probably one of Florida's most famous ghost stories. It is centered around the bridge that spans from the Chippewa River in the swamps north of Mariana. The legend says the ghost of a young woman named Elizabeth, Elizabeth Bellamy roams the swamps around the bridge on dark foggy nights. She is buried in a cemetery not far from the bridge. The bridge cannot be accessed by car, but it can be reached by the Bellamy Bridge Heritage Trail on Highway 162 north of Mariana. The trail is open during daylight hours. The ghost of Bellamy Bridge comes from two stories. The first evolved over three, over 100 years of time, and the other is the true story of Elizabeth Bellamy. The legend is that Elizabeth was a young, beautiful bride of a prominent planter, politician, and examiner, Dr. Samuel Bellamy. The two were deeply in love and planned for their wedding to be held in the backyard of a mansion he allegedly built for his wife-to-be. After the wedding, tragedy struck. Elizabeth was dancing with her husband when a candle came in contact with her dress <clears throat> and burst into flames. She came running downstairs, screaming. Overcome by the flames, she was terribly injured. She sur survived for four days before dying. Her body was buried on Samuel's brother's plantation in a grove of trees near the Chippewa River. The legend says that a spectral figure dressed in a white began to appear at night along the banks of the river. When the bridge was built, her ghost could be seen in the swamp surrounding it. But is it true? Samuel and Ele Elizabeth Bellamy were real people. They grew up near each other in North Carolina and were married in July 15, 1834 in North Carolina, which was three years before the alleged wedding and fire in Florida. Both the groom and Bellamy took interest in land in Florida, and soon the Bellamy brothers and their wives relocated to Florida. Samuel's brother bought the land where the Bellamy Bridge stands. The lands along the Chippewa Rivers were ideal for growing cotton and sugar cane. However, the swamps were breeding grounds for mosquitoes, which carried mal malaria and yellow fever, which is how Elizabeth met her death. From fever, not fire, Elizabeth was buried in the grove of trees near the river. The mansion Samuel had built for his wife wasn't built until nine months after Elizabeth was dead. The next story from Florida is the Swamp Booger. In the woods and wilderness areas of northwest Florida, there is an old Yuchi Indian legend of a strange creature that inhabits the swamps and eats flesh. Some have called it Bigfoot, but along the Chattahoochee River, it's called the Swamp Booger and it's seen by hunters and farmers. Next, we're going to talk about the stories of Georgia. The first story comes from the Wolf Wolf Oak Axe Murders. August 6, 1887, on the Wolf Oak Plantation, the Wolf Oak family had been murdered, struck in the head or upper body with a short-handled axe that belonged to Tom Wolf Oak. Eventually, Tom was charged, convicted, and hung for the murder of his entire family. There is currently nothing left of the Wolf Oak home. Reports of the area are ghostly screams, visual apparitions, disembodied voices, and feelings of desperation. The second story comes from the Hay House. The Hay House was converted into a museum in 1962. Tenants at adjacent apartments next to the Hay House have reported seeing a ghostly woman stalking the top floor windows during early mornings. 
Witnesses have also described cold spots, footsteps, and door slamming on their own. Many reports of someone breathing over their shoulder and moans emanate from the master bedroom. The third story is from the Gaither Plantation. The Gaither Plantation has seen a vast amount of murder. Many visitors report seeing staggering figures dressed in Civil War attire. There are also reports of a female spirit in the antebellum home who was assumed to be the ghost of Cecilia. Cecilia is the daughter of the former owner. Cecilia's room is the location of the disembodied voices, phantom footsteps, and apparitions. The next story comes from the Sinyard House. Extensive work and remodeling was done to the home and it awakened the spirits that dwelled within. Reports in the house include items being pulled out of kitchen cabinets, doors slamming shut, shower curtains suddenly opening on their own. Those who visit claim to hear sounds of a child playing upstairs, phantom footsteps, and the smell of perfume. Some claim a wrinkled pile of clothes will become mysteriously folded and placed at the foot of the bed. There are also instances where a woman's voice was heard singing a lullaby accompanied by a full-body apparition. The current owners of the property researched the property's history and discovered shortly after the Civil War, a live-in maid and her child were found dead in the Sinyard home. The last story of Georgia is the Old Governor's Mansion. The mansion was built in 1838 and is currently owned by Georgia College and State University. It has been claimed for years to be haunted. Reports span from lights turning on and off, beds unmake themselves, and and the smell of freshly baked goods when nothing has been cooking. These are said to be the occurrences of Mary, a former cook. The smells are reported to be of blueberry muffins, cookies, pork, and black-eyed peas. One event was the smell of burned potatoes, so strong the fire department was called, but the source was never found. The last state we're going to discuss is Hawaii. The first story is about the Majina, the faceless woman. In 1959, a woman reported seeing a Majina at a drive-in theater in Kanala. The woman said she went to use the restroom and noticed a woman combing her hair. Once close enough to see the other woman, she noticed the red-headed woman had no facial features. The woman who saw the faceless woman allegedly had a nervous breakdown and was treated at a hospital. Locals originally thought the story was just a rumor, but when local radio host Glenn Grant was discussing its validity, validity on air in 1981 the woman called in and told her story once again after this stories of the faceless mujina emerged across the islands the second story is the little people of hawaii the menahun also known as nawa are the hawaiian version of leprechauns They are short in stature, being about two feet tall, and dwell in lush forests away from civilization. They are portrayed as mischievous, but also possess the supernatural ability to build or construct anything they desire within a day. Known as master builders, they were often hired by the native Hawaiians to build homes, temples, and places of worship. They are shy and prefer to work at night when no one is around. If they are caught in the act, they will drop what they are doing and disappear to never finish their work. And if you're the person who interrupts them, you'll be turned to stone. They are credited for building the largest aquaculture reservoir on the island. The theory is that the Menahu are real people from Marquise Island who migrated to Hawaii before it was inhabited by the Tahitians. It is believed that the Tahitians forced the Menahun to retreat to the deeper part of the forest in efforts to survive. The third story is the Green Lady of Wahawi. The spirit is described as a woman covered in in moss and green mold who wanders the Wahiawa Gulch. The locals call her the Green Lady. She is mostly seen near the Wahiawa Botanical Garden but reports say she can be seen at the elementary school. 
Those that have seen her near the elementary school described her as a woman with green fish-like scales, jagged teeth, and hair covered in seaweed. The common backstory is that there was once a woman who visited the gulch with her children and one of her children were lost and never found. The woman died of heartbreak and is said to still roam the area looking for the lost child. It is also said she will take any child she comes across. Number 4. Pearl Harbor December 7, 1941, Japan launched its attack on the naval station in Pearl Harbor. The Hickam Air Force Base next to it was targeted as well. Ghostly apparitions, unexplained lights, and eerie noises are said to be common around the site. One building at the base is said to be the site of ghostly soldiers walking around the corridors, footsteps, and painful moans echo through the empty rooms. The guard shack is said to be especially haunted. Witnesses say they have seen a soldier dressed in 1940s military attire standing in the guard shack. Other ghosts are seen at the dock of the USS Arizona. Ghosts are seen. Apparitions are said to patrol the area even during the day. Visitors report feeling a great sense <clears throat> of sadness, being frightened for no reason, or extreme pain. Well guys, that's all we have for you today. Stay tuned and keep watching. If you want more videos like this, give this video a big thumbs up. If you made it to the end, leave a comment below. As always, thank you for watching guys. Stay creepy!